absentia. Uh, we don't take this lightly. We thank God for the. I don't know if I'm thankful, <laughs> but uh, we thank God uh, for the opportunity to just break bread together with um, the brethren. Amen. And uh, greetings once again, family, in Jesus' name. Um, I've got a bit of a tricky, tricky message, but let's see how it goes. I trust God to help me to articulate it in the best way that we'll be able to minister to all of us this morning. Amen. Um, can you say to your neighbor, your case is valid? Yeah, your case is valid. And uh, you can also say to your neighbor, you are in good company. You are in good company. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to take our scripture reading this morning from the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. And it's a familiar passage of scripture, Romans 15 verse 4. Just by the way, whenever you hear a pastor repeating the scripture many times, it's not, for, it's not that you guys didn't catch it. It's because we at the back didn't catch it. <laughs> so it's for them. Uh, Romans 15 verse 4. For, uh, um, for whoever, sorry, sorry, sorry. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning that through the patience and comfort of scriptures, uh, we might have hope for whatsoever thing whatsoever things were written before uh, they were written for our learning that through the patience and comfort of the scriptures we might have hope amen this scripture I thank God that I came across this scripture this scripture has really revolutionized my life and my view of the Bible because I now look at the scriptures and understand that there is something that God wants me to learn every time I read a passage. Even those ones that don't make sense, you know. And uh, the son of this, the son of this, the son of this, and he begat. And it looks like it doesn't make sense. But if you're wearing a different hat, a hat to want to understand, what is it that God wants me to learn from this particular part of scripture? So this morning we're going to be delving into that particular space of looking at, um, at different scriptures that have got something which is in there for us to learn. Amen? Every part of scripture, there's something that is in there for you to learn. Even with Bath, uh, David and Bathsheba, uh, and, uh, and it looks like it's a bad scripture, uh, or it's like an awkward story, but there's always something that God has, has locked up into the scripture for us to learn. Just, just to give you a funny one, when other men go out to battle and to work, you should not stay at home because you'll end up seeing things you shouldn't see. That is David and Bathsheba. <laughs> so just the basic lesson right there. So, <laughs> so there's always something to learn in every, every scripture. And from that very same scripture, and now you're going to have to now try and conceal the things you are doing when other men are, were busy fighting. Because that's what happened with, with, with David. But there's ov obviously other lessons that we can learn from that. And now you're going to become a murderer because you're trying to conceal something that um, shouldn't have happened in the first place had you been in battle where you were supposed to be. So there's always something, um, even with those ones that, that don't make sense. But this morning we're going to be looking at um, how the Lord really laid this. It's, and that's what I'm saying. Um, the difficulty all, always is how you receive it and how you have to now present it um, so that it makes the same sense into, um, uh, in, into the ears of the hearer. Because remember with God, how, how it happens, it's like God doesn't speak for a long time. It's like he deposits something in you and all of a sudden you have an understanding of a mystery. And then now you must at try to articulate it. God doesn't speak paragraphs and what, what. He just says something. And all of a sudden, that thing explodes in you, and it just starts unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. And you're like, oh, my goodness, I never saw this before. And you keep asking him, and you, you just take it. It's more like meditating on the word, as it were. And um, then the scripture just keeps on just unfolding and unfolding, and until it just uh, 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 blesses, you, blesses you out of your socks. So here it is. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5 to 7 says, 
let your gentleness be, um, uh, Philippians 4, verse 5 to 7, let your gentleness be an, um, apparent to all. The Lord is near. So here's the scripture, verse 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition. This is from another version there. Or the other uh, synonym of petition would be uh, supplication. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. In the Amplified, it says, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, um, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. I'd been struggling in terms of how am I going to really minister and put this 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 looks very awkward so <laughs> i'm struggling right here they're trying to get a picture um so um you see i'm now distracted so we've been uh, uh, um the scripture says make your requests known your petitions and your supplication so i've been struggling to um how am i gonna place this and last night i almost called uh at Volvo. i almost called you last night to say hey man i just got you know the holy spirit is so faithful guys so last night as, um, as I'm preparing, I've been preparing, of course, uh, for, for a while, trying to get a message. Like I've always said, um, and I'm, I'm saying this, you know, this looks like it's easy, uh, but it's actually not. Because you can, I can come and read John 3 verse 16 and then we go home. But when you are like, Lord, what is it that you want to say to your people now? That is the difficult part. Because now you must try and uh, you must hear what God wants to say now to his people. They know John 3 verse 16. They know this. So that's what makes this place a sacred place. Because it's not just coming with whatever canned food you had. Like, ah, one day I was shop, I got this one. No, no, it's not like that. It's like, what is it that God wants to say now? Think about it. In this room right now, someone is like, Lord, I need money. Someone is like, oh, Lord, I need a breakthrough. Someone is like, Lord, I'm ending my life. Someone is, and then we know you're just going to can food and just come with something that you think is going to like, yeah, and make them feel good. <laughs> so this is what makes this place to be a very um, sacred place because when you're standing here, you're representing God. And people have left their beds in this cold weather saying they're here coming to meet with God and so on and to hear God. And so man shall not live by uh, bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So last night, then I'm, I'm very, very late in the night. Um, I'm, I'm working on this message. Okay, Lord, okay, okay, okay. At first, it was very, very difficult. And, um, and I thank God for what happened. This song that we just sang now, the Lord just dropped it in my heart. So I just kept on singing it and singing. I actually played it and I tried getting it on, on YouTube and I just kept it on repeat. And all of a sudden, something just opened up. Like the difficulty that I was having in uh, trying to articulate what I'm going to be sharing with us today just opened up. And right there, the Lord was showing me something. That sometimes you don't, um, sometimes when you are faced with a barrier, Sometimes it will not take, because I tried, I did shanda, 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 shanda. I'm like, hey man, I'm not breaking through, man. I, I prayed in, in my language. Ay, 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 it's tough. And the Lord just said, and then this song just dropped into my spirit. And you need to be very, very sensitive when you're a child of God to know what is the weapon that God wants to use at that time. A little did I know that this song is just going to open up. And it just, I've just been in oh my goodness just worshiping god i just started what crying just and in that moment all of a sudden what was difficult just became easy and all of a sudden what was like complex and uh, difficult even for me to understand and articulate and whatever just started making even more sense because i'm like lord but i don't know how to say this uh, so what am I saying? I'm already in the message that sometimes what God wants to do in our lives will take our sensitivity to him. And sometimes what you are going through right now, you've been praying and praying and praying. It doesn't need that. But are you sensitive enough to hear what is it that God wants me to do in this situation that I'm finding myself in? Sometimes it's not even praying. Sometimes it's just, just worship. And you just worship him and you worship him. Well, I experienced it last night. 
and you're just worshiping and then things just become, you just feel lighter and, and you just feel that it is done or it's okay. Just in that space of worshiping or I'm, I might as well even put it this way, that place of surrendering. Because if, you have, if, if, if I wanted to pray, I felt like I want to pray. But the Lord says, don't pray, sing. I need to surrender my plan, my solution, my strategy. And trust his strategy. That this strategy is the, the perfect one that will have a bull's eye on what is happening right now. And I'm just coming this morning to say to us, and that's why I say you are in good company. And that your case is valid. Each and every one of us in this house right now, I say this without any contradiction. Whatever you are going through right now, in the word of God, your situation has been made provision for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no COVID-19, yes, of course, in, in, in the Bible. But there is sickness and diseases that encompasses your situation if it has anything to do with healing if it has anything to do with incurable diseases we see jesus healing leprosy and healing all sorts of the bible would even go further to say that jesus healed like for example when he went to heal peter's mom the bible says peter's mom had a fever uh, uh, and of course jesus touched her and the fever disappeared and of course, your child sometimes, well, we know it. Sometimes the child has a fever, they are hot and whatever. And the Bible has made provision. How, when there's a fever, what do you do? Panado. <laughs> yes, and panado, yes. But what do you do when there's a fever? When someone is having this heat. When you look at the word fever there, it speaks about an extreme heat. And sometimes it's demonically influenced. It's demonically uh, 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 activated. But Jesus then shows us how we take authority over such situations. And I'm here to say to you, every one of us needs from this day, if you haven't done it already, go look into the Bible. Take your situation, whatever it may be. What is your case? Which case in the in our book of case studies. The Bible is a book of case studies that God has given you and I to be able to look into and find our case. The reason I wanted to call Advovo there is that, um, Advocate, I, I, the reason I want to call, because I wanted to verify this thing, that I, the Holy Spirit just, guys, yo, this was really amazing for me. I'm not thinking low, I'm not thinking anything. And the, the Holy Spirit just drops, uh, while I'm worshipping, the Holy Spirit just drops this and says, case law. I'm like, case law? I go and Google, what is case law? And it was so amazing to see what case law is. We normally hear people, especially now, because you in South Africa, we've got so many judges and advocates. We are law ex experts now since these things are being advertised. And have you seen uh, what happens on social media? Whenever there's a case, everybody knows which way it's going to go. And well, this advocate, ah, this one was more powerful. So here's case law. Listen what case law means. Case law is a law that is based on judicial decisions rather than law based on constitutions, statutes, and um, or regulations. Case law concerns unique disputes resolved by courts using concrete facts of cases or previous cases. Even if I can leave that and you go understand what I just said to you, you will, you will understand what I've just said is such a mouthful and it is such a, a powerful uh, um, uh, uh, thing to know. So case law, we normally hear them. I normally hear advocate um, Paul because he's been the popular one on, on these things. He would say, according to a, what, what, a Majid case, a, a, a judge so and so said one, two, three, four. And that, what did that do? It set a precedent. All right? Ooh, if you're hearing me, you're already there. You're already there. You're already there. 
it sets a precedent on how such cases are supposed to be dealt with. I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. So when we look at our book of case studies, you need to be able to go into the book of case because what the lawyers and the advocates and them do, they go and try to find a case that is speaking to my case so that I don't have to do a lot of uh, constitutional what, 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 what. I can just say, but there is a precedent that has been said about cases like this. So my Lord, I come because of the precedent that has been set by the courts. And that alone is able to cut such an amount of, 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 uh, uh, motivation, trying to motivate and motivate and motivate and motivate to try to convince the, the judge to, to try, please, you know, judge, you know this guy, uh, you just say, you know, according to case Mangma, and the interesting thing about this case law, when I normally hear, they would even quote a case that was not even in this uh, area, am I right, Advovo? They would quote a case of something that happened in America. Ha! Huh? I'm saying something. So your case might not be similar with any, meaning the details of your situation might not have existed in the South African realm. But if there, had been, there has been a case somewhere that has the details and the similarities of your case, the judge has an obligation to look at the precedent that was set before about such a case. And what am I saying to us this morning? You've got so many things that you have went through or you are going through. And sometimes you are trying to twist God's arm and trying uh, certain things uh, to try and uh, get a decision or a, a judgment or a, a judgment in your favor in this particular matter. And we've been failing because what we've been doing, we've been going and complaining. Oh, judge, please, judge, man. Hey, please, please, man. You can see me. You can see my. And the judge, the great judge or God in the heavens, who is the righteous judge, is waiting to hear. Okay, let me give you an example. The lady who, um, it's in Matthew. Let me see, Matthew. I think it's Matthew 15. I wasn't planning to go to the scripture. Um, Matthew, the lady who came, it's Matthew 15. The lady who came and said to Jesus, the daughter was uh, sick. You know the story? The daughter was sick and um, uh, she came to Jesus praying that he, um, I mean, he would come and heal her. And Jesus says, no, 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 I do not give bread to the dogs. Uh, well, but that time he wasn't talking about physical dogs. It's that thing. Uh, <laughs> I thought of saying this, but uh, no, let me not say it unless people get offended. Uh, but it's that thing where uh, certain people... Uh, they would say others who do not have certain things that they have that they are dogs or they are less or sub. Uh, 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 le uh, okay, let me just say because I'm now going to try to explain a long thing. So in the Kosa culture, because you never went to the mountain. So they will now call you a derogatory or a, 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 a term that belittles you because you did not do certain things. So he was calling her a dog only because she was not a Jew and so on. So Jesus was saying, I've not come for you guys. I've come for the Jews and so on. So she then, and this is what I'm talking about. She then says to, the, to Jesus, but even dogs, she's arguing her case, but even dogs, eat from the master's table, at least crumbs nyana. And the verdict was changed for her. Why? She was rejected initially, but the verdict was changed because she managed to go and get something that supports her case. And as a result, Jesus like, I've never seen such a faith before. I've never seen anyone. And then he begins to say, your, your child will be healed and so on. And the Bible says, in that same hour, the, the, the child was healed. What am I saying to us this morning? It is so amazing, you know, when you look into the word of God. I went and looked at the Bible. And I tried to get as many miracles as I could get. And I found, and this is not an exhaustive number. It seems that in the Old Testament, we've got almost... 
but I don't fully agree with this because I couldn't get into the nitty gritties and the details of, of a miracle. For example, they will call the creation one miracle. But I believe in creation there is multiple miracles. You understand? But let's say it's just one miracle, it's fine. So if you look in the book of Genesis, I'm just trying to show you how you can go and get a case that pertains to your life and be able to, um, to, to, to come before God with it. And um, one of the things that I've learned, um, and I've learned it this week or, well, recently. As Bazalwani, based on your school of thought or where you have been taught, if you've been taught prayer is, sha, 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 that's all, like, that's your default uh, 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 way of approaching God. And what happens is that you are now faced with a situation that does not need that. But because to us, even, even now, if you can say we must pray, and you look at yourself, or we all listen, or you can listen to everybody, you're going to hear that people are going to pray. Someone is going to say, Oh, because of how they have been taught how to approach God. And someone else is going to, and I say, okay, come on, let's worship the Lord. Someone else is going to be saying, we bind the devil. We, we bind anything that is not of God. But the, 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 the request was not to fight. No, we're not fighting now. Just appreciate it. But because you have not been taught or you have not been accustomed to that way of approaching the throne room, you will find it difficult. But there are case studies in the scripture that show that we do not only approach him with warfare. We do not only approach him with, uh, with, pe with uh, petitions only. We do not only approach him when there is trouble. Oh, there are case studies, if you go into the word, where people, after they have received their breakthrough, see, now when we've got our breakthrough, we just continue with life. But, yo, excuse me, I had something very interesting that the Jews do. And of course, we are not uh, Jews. We don't follow their, 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 their way of f doing things. But it was very interesting to hear that. <laughs> this is so funny, but it is very interesting because there's something in it. Apparently, in the Jewish culture, they've got prayers for everything. Seemingly, before you eat, you pray before, whatever. whatever. They've got a prayer. Oh, I'm going to say, which prayer is this? For when you go to the bathroom. Yes. Because these days, because of these phones, we spend an hour in the bathroom. On Wi-Fi there. They normally say if someone is, uh, is, is in the bathroom for long, just switch off the Wi-Fi, you'll see they'll come out. <laughs> So, uh, the, he, he, here's the interesting thing about this prayer that they do. Apparently, when they are in there, just like you would see in bathrooms, there'll be stickers. Some, they're trying to get your mind from the business you are busy with in the bathroom. They'll maybe be writing there something like, whatever, be motivated. Or even at these days, they put adverts. I don't know if you've seen in some of these public toilets, they would put an advert. So that while you are busy, you are, your mind is distracted uh, and so on. But the Jews apparently have this prayer. That while they are in the in, in there doing their business, which is very interesting, they are busy saying, Lord, I thank you that my body works. I'm like, what? You will appreciate that prayer when you're old and your, your, your body doesn't work fine anymore. I'm like, what? Things we take for granted. While the world is busy there, it's like, yo, I, I'm grateful I can do this. Lord, I thank you that my, my, my system is still functioning well. Hey, I'm not constipation. Hey, I don't have uh, what pals and all, all the... Lord, I thank you. I thought that was a very, very interesting thing to, to, in terms of things that people do uh, when, they, when they, they acknowledge God in everything. I brought that up to because how it came in was to say when we've got breakthroughs, we forget about God. We don't come back to say thank you. We don't do anything. We just continue with life as though life is, um, is, is normal. And certain things that we take for granted. Um, okay, let me not show this because I'll, 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 I'll trigger somebody. Genesis chapter 2. Um, so in the book of, uh, of, 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 of Genesis, there's about eight miracles, guys, that have been well grouped together if you don't go into the details of so in genesis chapter one you hear of a miracle of creation in the in genesis chapter chapter five 
it is uh, verse 24 there, it is the uh, miracle there of Enoch, of course, being taken by God and God, of course, uh, translating him. And um, uh, in Genesis chapter 7 and 8, you see of a miracle of um, when the flood came. It's there, the story of Noah. And there's, 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 a, there's a message in there that even if you obey God when, when everyone else is not obeying him, there is a reward for it. It's a case study. Like if God says to you, do something that does not make sense. Like for example, right now, people are not fasting, they're not praying, they're not doing this, but God puts it in your heart to start doing something that does not even make sense or start preparing for something that does not even seem like it will ever come. There's a case study that shows that people who do such things, eventually God does reward them. So if you look at that story of the floods, you will see such an instance. The story of Isaac, of course, if you have an issue of, 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 of um, Abraham and Sarah conceiving and having a child, if you have a case of not being able to conceive and have children, go and look at a case study and find a case that speaks to your situation. Oh, not only look at it, but go and look at the details of it. What posture did these people have before they received their miracle? Were they, wh what did they do? Oh, 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 hold it. <laughs> I'm saying something now because this, there are other things. Don't, don't copy everything. <laughs> because this is why I'm saying this. So with Abraham and Sarah, you know God promised them that they're going to have a child, right? And Sarah decided to help God. So don't go in there and say, oh, oh, Sarah and Abraham helped God. Uh, my helper, come. <laughs> Baba, my help. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't copy those kinds of things. But go and look at the righteous elements of a case. Let me put that as a disclaimer. And say, Lord, what posture? I see that in the word. People who are trusting you for, 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 for children, you kept on speaking to them, in, um, giving them a word. You, some of them waited for long, but they didn't kiss you or didn't um, have an attitude f towards you. Some of them, you, you kept on coming and, 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 and um, with Abraham, of course, he spoke and said, look, I've given you, I'm going to give you children as the sand of the sea or as the, as the, um, the stars of the, of, uh, uh, in the sky. And uh, all those things were things that God kept bringing now and then. And I can tell you now, even in your own life, if you are falling in this category or if, if there, there, is, there is encouragement that God keeps bringing in between your journey, that is speaking to try to encourage you to say, one day this miracle will happen for you or one day this, is, this such and such will happen in your case. But if you are ignorant to how God has previously, previous cases of how God dealt with this kind of thing, Oh, let's leave that one of, of Abraham. Let's look at Samuel and uh, Samuel there and uh, Hannah case. Let's assume that that's, that's your details. The details are you are uh, not getting a child and um, this has been difficult and so on. We see another approach. But now, that's why I said to you, with me uh, last night, I prayed, I prayed, shanda, shanda, shanda. That was not the breakthrough. I then got, I laid a song in my heart and then I started going in that particular direction. So as much as there can be multiple cases that speak about um, your particular situation, you need to find the one that is specific to you. And the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you to the one that has the marks of your situation. Oh, okay. The marks of your situation could be, let me just give an example between these two cases that I'm speaking about. With Sarah, we're not hearing uh, any story of her being mocked because of her condition and Abraham. But with Hannah, we hear that, you see, it's a, it's the same case, but it's not the same case. So with, with, ha with Hannah, she was being mocked for her barrenness and so on. So in those two cases, for you to come to the judge and say, Oh Lord, like Sarah, you did it for Sarah. You are quoting the wrong case. I don't know if I'm making sense. Your case is this one of Hannah. The conditions and the, the factors that are in this case is the one that applies to your, is closest to your one. So when you are praying, you go and find a case that is relevant to it. Whenever we say, and this is some of the things that we do, and because we grew up in the church, we understand what we are saying. What scripture are you standing on? 
it's exactly the same thing. When he says, so yeah, but what scripture are you standing on? And sometimes we say these things and people think they understand, but they actually don't understand. You have to go find a case. You go have to find a statute or a law that speaks about your situation. Where that has to do with provision. So in the book of, 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 of uh, let's see, in, in Exodus, there's a couple of miracles there as we have seen. And there's a miracle, of course, where God opens the Red Sea. That is found in Exodus 14, verse 21 to, to 31. The, the crossing of the Red Sea. And this one is most relevant to probably uh, maybe all of us or most of us at some stage in your life. Where there's a Red Sea in front of you and there's an enemy chasing you. You're like, God, this is closing in on me. If you don't step in, I am toast. You need to find which scripture best describes your case. And I am here to say that whatever case you have, it is valid before God. And there is a precedent that has been set of how God deals with such situations. And, I'm, and as I'm talking about the Red Sea, I know there's someone right now, the enemies are behind you, debt collectors. <laughs> and the Red Sea is in front of you like, no way to go. I have no other way out of this. And this thing is closing in on me. What did Moses do? He lifted up his eyes. Just one example. And God gave him a strategy. So that I'm trying, are you getting what I'm trying to say to you? So you are, you are busy, oh Lord, oh Lord, come through, come through. But a particular case study shows a case, shows us that in moments like this, Pastor Ngumisa spoke about that lady with the oil who was about to, to die and whatever. In moments like this, previous cases, how God has dealt with them, there are some where God comes and supernaturally does things, but it looks, it, it seems like when there is a, a Red Sea in front of you and there are enemies behind you, God seldom or sometimes, but oftentimes gives a strategy. But what do we do? Oh, Father, Father, Father. We're not even listening out for a strategy. Because we have not looked for the precedent that God has set of how he deals with things that he deals with. All circumstances like yours. Can we close right here? And for you, you, you go and find, no, I'm not closing, but I'm just saying. For, for you to literally go to, even with us guys, we are the most resourced generation, but we are the laziest generation in terms of studying and finding what God has said. Because all it takes, right now while I'm talking to you, by the time I finish here, you can take out your phone and you can get a, a relevant case right now while I'm talking to you. Through what? Brother Google. You can literally just Google and ask, how did God heal incurable disease i'm sure you'll get a plethora of uh, and a whole lot of of of, mess, of of scriptures that speak about such cases are you with me are you with me i'm not here to try to convince you and whatever this morning i'm here to tell you that you need to look at your situation and begin to do the right look at the precedent and yes in your case god can take tweak it here and there but what I'm trying to say, because sometimes when our back is against the wall, we don't even know what to do. Sometimes, as a matter of fact, we, we, we pout and say, I'm not even praying. God is not coming through. He's not doing anything about my situation. When people are testifying, oh, they're testifying, but Lord, when is it my turn? And when people, um, I remember one sister was telling, t sharing a testimony. I heard it, I was walking in. I didn't hear the details of the testimony fully, but she was saying um, that she started joining prayer in the morning. She started joining prayer. She felt an edge to do it. She started joining prayer in the evening. She was just praying and praying, praying. And lo and behold, boom, breakthrough. She followed a particular way of, of that God laid in her heart. And if you can look at that particular uh, way that she did things, I can tell you now, there is someone who began to call on the Lord in the morning and in the evening. And their breakthrough came. It is in the word. But what do we do? We don't go and look at the precedent that has been said about different cases and situations that have to do with our lives. 
you are you are you are being attacked at work but there is a case of people who have been attacked and how God vindicated them Mordecai Shadrach Meshach and Abednego Daniel your case is in that book you must go and find that case and begin to stand on that word and begin to say Lord I, okay, now I'm not coming and petition the Lord and bring a petition and say, Lord, the Bible says, let your request and your petitions be made to God. Be anxious of nothing. Some of us, anxiety has slipped in into our lives and uh, we do not know how to deal with the situations that the enemy has put and blocked us with. And I was saying, um, one other thing that I realized this week, no, well, recently, um, my back was against the wall. I'm like, hey, Lord, I need you. Lord, 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 Lord. And, I, and the Lord began to make me to pray differently. And I'm not making doctrine out of what I'm about to say. When it has to, the Lord laid this to, to, to me, and I saw it practically. When it has to do with your needs, you must approach God the Father. You missed it because we don't make a distinction. When it has to do with your needs, just like your child here comes to you, daddy, 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 can I have a sweet? Or whatever. You must approach God the Father. When it has to do, when it has to do with your needs, unless God gives you a case that you must go bind and, and whatever, that's a different thing. But when it has to do with your needs, I'm telling you, it's like a fast lane. When you say, God, Father, okay, I don't know what's that. Lord, oh, no, actually, I wasn't even saying Lord. I was literally saying Father this time. I said, Father, I'm in trouble. When you talk to your father, you know, oh, Father, hey, Father, oh, Father. Hey, bro, <laughs> it's rough. If you don't step in today, as your kind, I need you to step in today. For me. I really need you. I I don't have a way out of this. Let me take 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 you to the extent of what I say. I mean, I say, Lord, I don't have a a rich dad who can get me out of this. I don't have a rich sister or brother who can get me out of this. You are my only hope. If you don't come in, yo, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I come to you as my father. My heavenly father. You are a loving father. You are a righteous father. Lord, you are able to do anything. You own it all. Come to you. I'm coming to you as daddy. <laughs> I need you. You see, now, now I need you. And one, two, one, two, ah, done. Two, pass, it passes you the ball there. You're like, oh, whew, thank you, Lord. Whew, hey, that was close. But what I learned from that is a pro when it comes to your needs unless he tells you otherwise when you approach him and say to you I just kick that devil it's not me here just kick that door and then you switch to whatever he's going to tell you um, I hope this will be something for somebody after this don't shandarize go speak to your daddy and most of us ask, uh, we have a problem with fathers. Uh, you know, I don't want to go into that because we don't have a good relationship with our fathers and our fathers were not good people. They were not responsible. Da, 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 da. But it is, it, you see, we can say that to the guys that side who are in the children's church. We can say that like, no, you're dead, what, what. But you, who has a master's in, in psychology and what, what, you are clever enough to go and research that God is a good God. You can't go with your president of your bad father. I get to when you uh, you've got a master's. How? Um, the master's you own get. You know Pythagoras. No, Pythagoras is not even any complicated. <laughs> you know complicated things. 
but you have not taken time to go study the Father, the Heavenly Father, how He operates. Honors, masters, or oh, even grade 12. We have done so many projects by then. Yeah, I get what you've researched, you found something. So I'm trying to bring it as a, so that we stop this pity party that we do and we say, no, no, I don't have a good relationship. You are robbing yourself. Go and speak to Father God. Go and, right now you, you watch podcast and chill. Oh, sorry. You see, sometimes I reveal my age. You watch, <laughs> you watch um, whatever, podcast, <laughs> news, whatever. And you spend an hour, two hours watching that stuff. Oh, oh, let me go back to that thing of, of the Jews praying and praying for their body. Instead of you being there and scrolling on Facebook and watching people's timelines and all sorts of things and laughing, just open a YouTube message that speaks about the love of the Father. And while you are busy, at least come out of there with a degree. <laughs> eh? come, out, come out of there with something that is spiritual at least. <laughs> Instead of coming out of there with all sorts of junk from, uh, uh, um, from just social media that has not helped you or does not even help you with your situation. Amen? We see God providing manna that is like supernaturally. So it tells you that God sometimes will give a strategy, yes, will tell you do this, do that, don't do this. But sometimes God will supernaturally just do it himself. But you see, you cannot go and say, oh, you who gave manna, you who gave manna, when your case is not that case of manna. Your case is the woman with the jaw, jar uh, of oil and, and, and so on. That's your case. God doesn't want to do a supernatural miracle. He wants to give you a strategy to come out of your situation. Are you making a distinction? So my, my, my request to us all this morning is to go into the Bible and go find your case. And go find a case that speaks of a precedent that God has set about your situation. If there are family issues in your bloodline, I can tell you now there, are, there, are, there is a case of someone. Let me just give you an example. The name that just popped to my mind now is Gideon. And this is where you see, and I didn't prepare this. Like literally when I said there's a case of a family, the Holy Spirit just said Gideon. The Bible says Gideon had to go and overthrow the altars of his, his uh, um, uh, fathers and his bloodline. So if we're now, we are blind with, uh, with uh, uh, what you call African uh, signs in our family. Like we are hectic. We 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 specialize with with uh, oh okay with witchcraft guys, <laughs> African signs. You know, you know you've got a gogo who's hectic. You know you've got a, a, a whoever aunt who's hectic. They know how to do experiments. They are hectic. You know in your family, go and hear father these things. They are in my but how do I progress in you? Me now I. I can't. I, whenever I try to take one step forward, it's like I move forward and I just keep. What's resisting me? It's not probably a resistance. It's what's holding you back. Nothing is blocking you from the front, but something is holding you and tying you to something. So Gideon, the Bible says in the book of, 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 of Judges, God said to Gideon, go and overthrow the altars of your And then the same guy who was timid, not knowing how to do, became a deliverer. Your case is valid. It's in this book. Go find it. Sometimes we are overstaying in a season that we should have actually long come out of. But the enemy is taking advantage of our ignorance. Of not knowing that as far as he was alone. It's not every prayer that works for everything. But some of us have got uh, just one uh, uh, prayer script for everything. It doesn't work like that. 
Your prayers have to be inspired by God. The Bible says, okay, here, here, here we're linking it. It's in the book of, I think, First John or somewhere there. If we ask anything in line with his word, he will give it to us. What is it about your request that lines up with the word? And how do you confirm that it lines up with the word of God? That what you're asking God for is what God really wants for you. I hope you're getting something. If you don't get anything out of everything that I've said here, just get this. From here, go find your case. Identify your case and go find a case in the Bible that speaks about your situation. And be, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you because you're going to find, even now if you just hit Google or whatever and say, sick person, you're going to get like hundred scriptures about sick people. But God must take you to the one that speaks to your situation or the ones that speaks to your situation so that when you come and you pray and you begin to uh, where the enemy is resisting you you come by the authority of the name of Jesus and by the power of what God has done in the past if he has done it before he can do it again and he wants to do it again this was just a book that is showing us what God is able to do. Because without these, these records, and a very interesting thing is this, that even if you look at, um, I think it's Daniel, when he was about to pray, um, and uh, when he's praying the, uh, for 21 days before the angel came, Michael, and that battle, as you know, the scripture in the book of Daniel, the Bible says he realized that they, according to the books, they were supposed to be out of, out of uh, captivity and so on. What do you know about your case? What do you know? Sometimes the enemy has kept us. He just put his feet on our neck. And we can't breathe. But it's because we do not apply what God wants us to apply in each and every situation that he wants us to, 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 to have victory in. So you'll see so many, so many. It's, it's really, really amazing. It was very interesting that actually, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but miracles that are recorded actually stop at the book of Acts. After the book of Acts, it's epistles and it's teachings and it's you, you hardly ever, well, except for the book of Revelation and so on. But the, those other books, they start speaking more about our conduct, about who God is. They start teaching us about who God is. There's no miracles in there. It was very interesting to, to note. And I'm saying this deliberately to say so if I am busy trying to get a case, but those are the books that I'm spending more time in, I am not going to find the case. That's what I'm trying to say. You're not going to find a precedent. Oh, yes, you will find a precedent. La Babayenza, one, two, three, four, must be kicked out of the church. Yeah, you will find that precedent. But you won't find the one. <laughs> you won't find the one that speaks about your situation. I'm helping you. I'm helping you because right now, and I'm not saying you shouldn't be reading uh, the epistles. You should. But I'm saying if you're busy with epistles, uh, that speaks about uh, um, how God is and how marvelous he is. and da, 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 They're yes, helping inform you about who he is. But they're not going to help you with your situation. Am I making sense? Hey, I hope I'm making sense because I just said even something so powerful. Because if you're only praying and you're there and you're speaking about, about, oh, uh, whatever, whatever. Um, yeah, he, okay, I don't want to use this one. He will supply all our needs because it speaks slightly to that. Uh, uh, what scripture can I quote, my goodness? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was, with, was God. And the word walked among us and the word, da, da, da. it's not speaking to your situation. Yes, it's powerful, but you are missing the mark. The Bible even speaks and say that you have not because you ask not. Ah, listen to what it says next. You can find it for me. Because when you pray, you pray amiss. Please find it there. Maybe they'll say I'm making it up. So I'm, I'm, for me, the re when I, this message started to say, Yo, Lord, I wonder what, what things are in my life. Or how many things are in my life that should have wrong God. And I just applied and did what is what I'm supposed to be doing and being able to hear what you want me to do about the situation. And as I'm talking about this father one, 
I, I, guys, okay, but unless the Lord reveals anything different to you, please go ahead and do that. But this one, I tested it and I proved it this week. And I saw God, not once, not twice. I saw God beginning to move in a way that is, is really amazing. And I was amazed. I'm like, oh, so it does work. So I'm saying to us this morning, I, I reiterate this one. If it has to do with your needs, start with the Father. Go speak to the Father. And I know some of us don't know how to speak to the Father because we are, we are used to, we've, we, are, we were trained in the military uh, wing of the kingdom. <laughs> eh? If you come from, again, we come from different backgrounds. And certain men of God are good with certain things and some are not good with certain things. You will find that they are extremely powerful with military warfare and, 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 and so you specialize in that. So your prayer life is just warfare, warfare all the time. But I'm here to say that change or you'll see. Okay, let me give you another story. Second Kings chapter 5 verse 10 to 14. This one blessed me when I saw it as well. Second Kings chapter 5 verse 10 to 14. Well, from verse, verse 1, I think around verse 3, it speaks about a little girl who, yep, my time is up. It speaks about a little girl who was working. Uh, this is a story about Naaman. The Bible says Naaman was this general, a big guy in the, in the, in the whatever. No, I'm speaking, I know I've got big, big guns in the house and in the kingdom. Uh, and and, and uh, people who are accomplished in life. So it speaks about this girl and this particular Naaman had leprosy. And this girl had been taken, of course, was now um, um, a slave and working for Naaman. And the Bible says that when Naaman was sick, this girl just happened to be in the vicinity. And the Bible says that she then said to, uh, to Naaman, oh, she says to the wife of Naaman, she says, you know, if, if my Lord had known, you know, there is actually a prophet in such and such a place, in, uh, um, his name is Elijah and whatever. And Naaman said, call for him. I want to see him. I'm, I need him to come and heal me. I'm going to say something on this particular case. Sometimes your answer or your connection to your answer is somewhere there with your subordinate. The one you don't regard the one you don't even, okay, let, let me bring it even uh, closer. I think because we don't live in the times of the Bible and so on, because those people were very religious and they were connected to God and so on. You know that through your helper, God can speak to you. Yeah, <laughs> and God just makes her to just say something that you didn't even think of. And all of a sudden, you, see you are now going in the right direction. I'm bringing that up to say, not he has big shots and whatever, and we are great, and we thank God for levels. Levels. We must know that God can use your um, subordinate or people below you to connect you to your miracle or to connect you to your breakthrough. Now, Angu Neyman, he was, of course, a big shot, like uh, having an attitude and all that. But this girl was very instrumental in connecting him to his miracle. And what is the case study there? Lord, if there are people in my life that I have overlooked, that are a connection to my miracle or to my breakthrough. Maybe I'm not the cleverest in, in your circle, but I might be that guy to connect you to something you probably didn't think I could. Anybody. Well, you've tried your big bras and they're not helping you. I'm sure Naaman tried all his guys and in his level and they couldn't help him. And the answer came from the most insignificant person in his life. And I'm saying, your case, God could bring you to that space and say, short left, right here. And you think it's going to be from there. And it comes right here. What you least expect. I hope you got something in there. Because there's somebody here. You have been stuck in that place. But God wants to take you out. You have not been listening. You have been doing things with the, going through the motions and so on. As we go through life and so on. 
but there's something God wants to do in our lives. And God is saying to us this morning, this is the summary of the message. I've got a solution for you. It's in the word that you, the one that is gathering dust, or in your app, <laughs> there is, your solution is in there, or at least something that's going to start the process for you, and I will direct your steps. And I will direct your steps. Whether it's a mental health situation, the Bible says Jesus got that guy who was, who was bound and uh, he was not uh, um, cutting himself and so on and no one could help him. But Jesus stepped in, go study what happened there and allow the Holy Spirit to cause certain things to jump up that will definitely speak to your situation. I can guarantee you there is so many. I don't want to go into, oh, whether it's uh, not having enough, you can ask God to multiply what you have and, and, and God is able. And, 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 and he, here it is, here it is. Something about that multiplication, something I saw, I saw there about how God multiplies little. So we take the little and we say, in the name of Jesus, you will multiply. You will. That's what we do, right? Let's go look at a precedent that has been set. The Bible says he took the bread and the fish and he gave thanks. And multiplication happened. I don't know if you see what I'm trying to show you. That you could apply the wrong approach. And you're like, but why with me is not multiplying? He gave thanks. And then he broke the bread. And it multiplied. And that could be the secret to your to multiplication in your situation. Mzalwan, go find your case study. I am telling you there is a case. I pray that the Lord will begin to navigate each and every one of us and take us exactly like Holy Spirit. Um, the Bible says that he will guide us into all the truth. Father, I pray that you will guide all of us into all the truth about our situation. We've been on this mountain for too long. So you think about the children of Israel. This is the last one and I sit down. The children of Israel, had they went based on what they are used to, had, 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 had um, uh, Joshua, when they got to Jericho, said, ah, Moses used to do like this, and took out his rod and say, Jericho, how? Jericho, and nothing happens. Why? Because he needed to hear what is the strategy this time. Oh, and had he, had he then, or who's this, Jehoshaphat said, hey man, you know Moses and Joshua, they went around the wall and then the walls crumbled. Okay, guys, there's an enemy coming. Let's go around, like around them and we will see and God is gonna, and the strategy was different. Similar problem, but different approach and strategy. So my prayer to you and I this morning is to say, Father, bring us to that place of knowing which weapon for which circumstance in Jesus name did you get something this morning last one because this one I've learned I've seen that it works the book of um, Acts chapter 16 verse 25 this is a strategy we, 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 we take for granted I learned that sometimes God will say just shush just worship because sometimes we think it's in our many words, you know, it's, it's, in, it's in us impressing him with our vocabulary that, oh, you who double Amazulu. Uh, you know, and he's like, I know I can. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and we're trying to impress God, you know, like, um, because maybe we had a sermon that says when you do this, it's going to work. And then we, you know, we're like just trying to conjure up something. The Bible says when Paul and Silas were bound in prison. The Bible says they just worshipped God. And the interesting thing, the Bible doesn't say they worshipped God for God to take them out. They were not doing it for, it was not like, okay Lord, you scratch my back, I'm going to scratch your back, you scratch my back. I'm going to worship you so that. But they were sensitive. No one said to them praise, worship and whatever. But they just they, they just responded to that worship that God has placed in their heart. Little did they know that that is the song of victory that God has dropped into their hearts. Or oh, that is the strategy of victory that God has dropped into their hearts. And the Bible says as they worshipped God, all doors began to open. Just by reason of just worshipping. Not praying this time, 
not Shanda rising this time. I'm one, I'm just, just thinking to myself, I'm like, I wonder how many of us that God has been saying, just worship. And every time we are in the God, presence of God, we're just praying and binding. Is it just, oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh, let me give you another one. Just be still. God calls you to his prayer. You go to pray and you're thinking you're going to be saying a lot of things and he just says, sit there. And you're just sitting in the presence of the Lord. You're praying some music. And you're just meditating on his goodness. And soon, boom, you didn't even lift a finger because God gave you a strategy of how to deal with your situation. Shall we stand? And um, shall we just worship maybe with one song? Then we're done. We're done. I just want to give us an opportunity to, to speak to God. Whatever he says you should do, that, 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 that whatever God wants you to say or, or whatever, um, it might be different for each and every one of us. But I believe there's something that God wants us to do and something that God is starting even from this, that we will move from this place. And it's really, really the prayer of my heart. I'm speaking to me too. I'm like, God, ah, oh man, I wish I knew this earlier. Um, oh, I sometimes these things, it's not even you. You just forgot. <laughs> so I just wish, Lord, I, 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 I applied this knowledge or this earlier. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, maybe, maybe let's do that. Where there is your name is your name. Let's just do it. Where there is your name. And then we will we'll be done. I just want to give us all an opportunity to approach God. Oh, and sometimes the language he will, the strategy he will give to you. G. David says, I cried to you, Lord. Oh, by the way, all our story is in the book of Psalms. <laughs> if you look at the things that David went through, up and downs and what, what you're going to find yourself in there. You will definitely find yourself of your back being against the wall or whatever. Amen? Shall we sing and then we'll, we are done. Close your eyes and fix your eyes on him. Sometimes the issue is not the case study. Sometimes the issue is you can't hear him anymore. So the issue is not that you can't find the case, but you don't have the one who to guide you to the case. And so I just want, if there is anyone here who says, you know what, hey, signal is a bit. Sometimes I'm tall and I'm tall, I'm not even sure anymore. Because the, the, the cares of life, you can end up having so many voices. And you don't know whether this is God or is this me or is it, you're no longer sure. <laughs> so sometimes the issue could be because And if it's you, please come to the front. Let's come pray with you. I radio in Puma station. I work in the radio. 
you're not sure where you are. So if you're here and you want us to pray with you, that the Lord will remove any hindrance to his communication with you. Whether it's in spiritually, whether God used to speak to you or spoke to you in various ways, but there's a just disconnection. And this is not as a result of, because sometimes when you say things like this, people think we say you sinned. Or even if you did, it doesn't matter. It's not about what you did or what you didn't do. Oh, what's critical is for you to hear clearly because your instructions are going to come from the Lord and they need you to hear. And sometimes the issue is just hearing. You're not hearing him well anymore. Because some of us, God speaks through an audible voice. Sometimes God speaks to an impression. Sometimes God speaks to us through dreams, visions, whichever way he speaks to you. He has a different language for each and every one of us. So if you're here, please come. Don't be embarrassed. It doesn't mean you sinned or you did anything. And even if you did, it's a good thing to come back to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing one more time and then we'll ask the pastoral team and elders to please just pray with those who are in front for the Lord to restore hearing hearing him clearly once again in Jesus mighty name worthy is your name, worthy is your name.
anyone in this place who wants to receive the Lord Jesus as their, their Lord and Savior or want to rededicate your life to the Lord, please just lift your hand so that we can pray with you. If you are here and you want to rededicate your life or you want to receive Jesus for the first time as your Lord and Savior, if you're in this room, please just raise your hand and then we'll come and pray with you in Jesus' name. I'm not seeing any hands lifted up. I'm looking around, not seeing any hand. And uh, in that case, then the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause His face to shine upon you. May you rule and reign in every area of your life. May you find your case in the Word of God and may you begin to advance in the name of Jesus. What used to be difficult, may the Lord cause it to be easy in the name of Jesus. May the Lord direct your path in the mighty name of Jesus. May you begin to be accelerated into that which God has purposed and planned for you. And those who have been locked up, those who have been locked up, those who have been locked up, may the Lord send his angels to vindicate and to set you free in the name of Jesus. Whatever it takes, may the Lord take you out of that place and set you into a new place where you ought to be right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, and we give you glory. 